I've questioned out loud, how am I going to do this? How am I supposed to do this time? How am I supposed to spend the rest of my life in prison? It's difficult. But when you think about certain things, it gets kind of hard, but I feel OK. How are you? Good, how are you? OK, we have a situation where a 16-year-old child who operates at about a 10-year-old level who uh, has organic brain damage and it was never presented to the jury. And that affected her all the way from the transfer hearing all the way through, uh, quite frankly, to the present. The fundamental question was, when you look at all this, was it a fundamentally fair trial? Your Honor, if it's all right, Mr. Bowe would like to make a brief opening statement. Kind of laying that, out. that would be fine. Mr. Charles Bowen, go right ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. We would intend to show to the court today that Centoya's sentence that was received in this uh, court in 2006 is the functional equivalent of a life sentence without parole. Two and a half years ago, I was invited <coughs> to go to see the documentary that Dan Bierman put together on Centoya's life. As a result of that, we, uh, we decided that this was a case that uh, needed to be heard again and that this was a, a major crisis in the system that needs to be considered. I think Centoya was abused as a child, and she was physically abused, and it, it sounds like she was uh, sexually abused over, over a period of time. Sexual abuse is a really, really big problem. In a way, our society has gotten much, much better at identifying these children. Now, unfortunately, we, we don't always, and I think Centoya's case, um, her sexual abuse went on unrecognized. For, for, I guess, considerable period of time. And it does affect a person later. Some people, they can rehabilitate themselves and they get themselves together against all the odds, but just imagine what could happen if there were people who wanted to help them, professionals who know what they're doing. Maybe this film, these issues revealed in this film, it can help another child. So another mother, another father, some other family doesn't have to go through that. I like the idea that the law is supposed to grow. It's, suppo it's always behind, but it should catch up with the evolving standards of, of society. And it should take into consideration uh, the advancement in science and medicine and technology that has taught us why children are not like adults. Your Honor will have the opportunity to hear really compelling evidence that's really the first, we think, the first real extensive discussion and diagnosis of a Tennessee juvenile with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. You'll see and hear stipulated testimony through the affidavit of the mother of Centoria Brown describing her use of alcohol throughout the pregnancy and then you will hear from these nationally known experts that Centoria Brown is the classic victim of fetal alcohol abuse. Psychosis is a marked abnormality of thinking so severe that these kids are not in touch with reality. This is a case that not only will make a difference for, hopefully for Centoria, but may make a difference for these thousands upon thousands of children who are born in situations that they can't control. In Tennessee, that means she's got to serve 60 years of imprisonment. If she gets the best record possible, she has to serve 51 flat, absolute years in incarceration. Thank you, Your Honor. We appreciate the opportunity to bring these issues before the court. 
regrettably, we have developed a cookie cutter kind of procedure, and I have uh, problems with the fairness of that. And the number one area where the fairness question arises is how we treat our children. The Supreme Court is going to get to answer the question as to whether our Constitution says that's fair or whether it's disproportionate. The sentence of a 67-year-old or 75-year-old man who commits the same crime is a lot less than on a 16-year-old girl with brain damage. It's not really a choice whether I'm going to adjust. I have to adjust. I'm actually going to college. Lipscomb professors, they come out and yeah, we get to obtain an associate's degree in letters, arts, and sciences. It's really empowering and it, it really makes you feel good about yourself. And that's what I'm doing right now. That's what my life focuses on right now and work on my case and stuff. I'm just trying to live.